Here we are at the Charlotte Motor Speedway for race two of 12 in the Gary Cup Series Season number five, Chase the Pennzoil 500. So let's take a look at our starting lineup. On the play of the 17, Julius Harrison. Two is outside is the 11 of Evan Hunter. Then third, you have Andrew Miller. Your first chaser start fourth is TJ Hanley. And rang out the top five, we got last season's champion Michael Gregory in the 29th. Two, two is outside the of Chaser in sixth, we got Brandon Tharp. Seventh is Tim Randolph. Eighth is William Seaman. And ninth, Keegan Thompson. Rang out the top 10, you got Kay Samita. The rest field go another chaser, Kevin Band, who's outside Marcus Sachi. Then you got Levi Shum, the chaser, John West, another chaser. Then Riley Spurley to be Jeff Bright, a chaser. Michael Canto and your chase points leader, Cole Luigi. They got Cara Friesen and Adam Lewis. He's carrying the Pennzoil colors here today. They got Francis Dustin, a chaser, and Trey Rainey. Then Luke Rainey and Derek Bouchard. Max Anderson and Jonathan Buford. Then Jason Smith Jr. and Wyatt Walker. Then you got DJ Rain, Cynthia Bright. Uh, Justin E. Two is inside chaser Joe Jefferson. Patrick Smith, another chaser. Then you got Josh Domito. Isaac Nichols, and then Alexander Rowe, a chaser. Jay Jefferson, two is inside Tim Gary in the 16. Uh, your lowest starting chaser. Then you got Avi Hernandez, two is inside Brady Wernus. And they got Alex Stewart in the final row, two is outside the 88 of Eli Bright. That is the Ford Car Field here at Charlotte for 51 laps as we now go down trackside to hear the command. As you can see, forward to cars fire up and roll off here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. A race that has been wild in the past. It'll be no different here today. 51 laps, a pretty long race here at Charlotte. It's always one of the longer ones of the season. As Julius Anderson will be on the front row, who's outside Evan Hunter. However, it doesn't matter where you start here at Charlotte because there can be many crashes that take out many people. So pace cars in. Get ready to go green here at Charlotte for the second chase race of the season. They come down the front straightaway. The green flag is waving. We're racing here in the Pennzoil 500 at Charlotte. Great turns 1-2 for Julius Harrison. He clears Evan Hunter as they come down the back straightaway. Hunter makes a charge back on the outside lane, but will not be able to make it stick. As they come off turn number 4, Julius Harrison trying to clear Hunter off of 4. He's going to do it, and he's going to lead lap number 1 here. Charlotte Morris Speedway. Here comes Andrew Miller with his teammate Michael Gregory behind him. Yeah, teamwork can also be very, very great here at Charlotte, especially since uh, pushing people by others is great. But look at Anderson off the top along with Evan Hunter. Andrew Miller got a little tight, and... Evan Hunter will go right on by. He'll get to second. He'll clear. Michael Gregory now going to go for that third position underneath his teammate Miller. Miller was kind of slowing up that line on the bottom lane. I think he decided to get out of that lane. Possibly just wait. That car looks pretty tight. He just got into the wall. So front two pull away. I believe there might have been a crash or something. I believe Tim Gary, someone might have gotten to the wall. You can see right there, 36th on up or kind of separated from these guys back here. So very interesting there. Three wide now going around to Andrew Miller. He's in the top lane. TJ Hanley going to go to the middle of that. He's going to get out of there before anything possibly happens to that 31, like hit the wall. He's doing a pretty good job, though, of not hitting the wall, especially with how high he was. The outside lane seems to be working very, very well, though, right now at this moment, as we got a pass for second. Michael Gregory trying to get his first win of the season, but Hunter off the outside lane does a great job of pulling as Andrew Miller into the wall. Once again, that 31 car looks very, very tight. Avi Hernandez also gets to the wall. The outside lane looks pretty dominant right about now. You can see Tim Randolph having to pedal it on that bottom. Get a little tight down there, I need someone. But Michael Gregory with no help up top. Hey, it can make passes work. It's just a little bit harder than what it has been in the past year. Possibly once we get some tire fall off, we might see some differences happen. Oh, Gregory now into the wall. He's going to fall back as we got a battle for the race lead. Evan Hunter is looking on Julius Harrison into turn three. He has a nose underneath that 17 car. Can he hold it to the bottom lane is the question. We've seen cars get tight down there. Pretty good run down the front stretch. Here comes Tim Randolph and TJ Hanley because they're side by side. Look at the run they have onto these front two. Remember TJ Hanley in the chase, so can't really afford to take a big, bold, risky move. But he can afford to try and pass these guys. To get up to that race league, get away from some of the other chasers. See right here, Brandon Tharp and Kevin Banner, two of the chasers behind him. Levi Schultz is coming up. Keegan Thompson trying to sweep Charlotte. We saw last season it was very, very doable as Jay, 
or uh, Jay Jefferson, excuse me, won uh, the Co or the uh, Pepsi 600, and then immediately almost won the Bank of America 500, which is now the Penzo 500. Uh, he actually finished second in that race last season, so very possible that Keegan Thompson could sweep. You can see, we got some cars going to the outside lane. Julius Harrison loses the race, he's gonna fall back to about the fourth, maybe even fifth position. As Evan Hunter has grabbed the race lead, you can see in the outside lane, Brandon Tharp, one of your chasers, Keegan Thompson, we said, trying to sweep. And there's your chase points there, Code Luigi in the 42. He was making up ground. He was about in the, inside the top 10. Now he's going to fall right back to about where he started. He started around 17th position. I believe he's now back there with Derek Bouchard, Levi Shell, and some others. And cars keep getting into the wall in front of him. It's not helping him out any, any way whatsoever. It's Andrew Miller and Keegan Thompson keep getting into that wall. This big battle right here, Julius Harrison underneath Kevin Banden. Trying to get his teammate back up a few spots as Brandon Tharp is uh, there, just the back of this train. See, I believe the outside lane actually got a pretty good run. Yeah, I don't know if someone pitted or what, but uh, the outside lane really pulled away. I believe someone, it, someone might have pitted, actually. No, just some weird thing there. Kevin Band got into the wall. That's something that's very prevalent with uh, Charlotte. Something about the outside lane of turn two, you just get very, very slick up there and you get into the wall. Mainly trying to power off the top, got slight contact with the wall. He's going to stay side by side with Julius Aronson. So we're not even a fifth of the way through the race. Your highest chaser is right now Hanley, but Levi Schoen's trying to change that. These two are right now kind of middle of the road in terms of chase points. They're around sixth, fifth position in points. So, you know, these two want to kind of just finish up there inside the top three chasers possibly and, you know, just try and... Get an advantage on that 42 car, because Code Luigi has been the best all season long. It's going to be very hard to try and derail him and see these front about 15, 16 cars, or single file in a big train. The 42 car is right now in the 15th position, then 16th on back, uh, ways away. So I don't know what happened to 16th on back. Some issue there in 3 and 4, because as you remember, Code Luigi, Adam Lewis, and some others were on the outside lane. They were on the inside by the time they got off of turn 4, so possible problem there. Levi Schoen's underneath Michael Gregory. That is for the fifth position. And they'd be one spot closer to TJ Hanlius. Look at Julius Anderson with a big move to the bottom lane of Tim Randolph. Just some weird thing we've been seeing here today. The inside lane, not, oh, Gregory, it's gonna work when someone nails the outside wall, exactly what Michael Gregory did. He pounded the outside wall. Look at Case Mayo taking it three wide underneath Kevin Bannon and Jeff Bright. Bright, might, in his best interest, want to back out of that. Oh, he slammed the wall for four. You never want to slam the wall. It's going to make your car even tighter. And then if you make a pit stop, you're obviously going to want to repair that damage in case there is a tire rub. Two teammates battle side by side. Case Mayo, the one not in the chase. Kevin Band is in the chase. As we look ahead to the race lead, Tim Randolph. Okay, get right back up in line, possibly on Evan Hunter. Very, very different Charlotte race than the past. Usually Charlotte, a lot of uh, wild beating and banging crashes and a lot of passing. But uh, here today, passing at a limit, very, very hard to do so. And uh, you can still do it, but it's just very, very hard on that inside link. See, Anderson, his progress was just halted right there. The only reason some of these guys are passing is because some of the guys are knocking the outside wall down off of two or four. See, Anderson gets by hand. He's now going to try and look for his spot underneath Anderson. But once again, gets tight down there. It's almost like there's a big arrow push once you get underneath someone. I don't know if it's something in the daytime here at Charlotte or with these cars, possibly. Remember, we've been using the Gen 6 cars and uh, first moved to these box cars and possibly uh, just haven't found the right setup. As Levi Schultz has been pounding the wall down the last few laps, he just did again. He's going to drop many positions. See the damage to the right side of that car as he drives on by. Code Luigi, Chase Points Leader is right now 15th position, just hanging out. He has right now, let's see, 1, 2 three, four, he has about five chasers ahead of him. So he'd finish sixth best chaser. I'm sure he definitely doesn't want to finish there, so he might have to get his rear end in gear. It's all gonna come down to if you can keep your car clean, and then if you can keep your car clean, you know, on the pit stop, can your team, you know, just make it right? You might not have the best car right now, but if you have the cleanest car out there, you could possibly come out there with a few more spots because, say, as we saw the 14th Levi Schultz, he was pounding down the wall. Right now, he's in the 10th position. He's in the top 10. Keegan Thompson, too, is outside, but I believe Schultz would clear him in 3 and 4. Schultz is right now in the 10th position. 
But if he has that damage that they want to repair just in case, it's going to take a few extra seconds. He's going to lose these five spots. He might come out in the 16th, 17th position. So that's just something to keep an eye on. While you may not have the fastest car, you may just get a little bit of a break. Evan Hunter has held the lead ever since he passed Anderson. Now Anderson trying to come right back up onto him and pass him. Michael Gregory into the wall once again. It's the, we've been seeing the same cars get into the wall. It's no one really different. It's all the same. Anderson, tight down low. Really tight. Evan Hunter tight on the top, though. He had a lift, but he's going to keep that position for now. Although these guys had a better run off the corner. You see Tim Randolph, I believe that's William Seaman in the 38, have joined this fight. Randolph, almost blocked by Hanley. Hanley's going to try and get down front of that 9 3. Does that. He actually takes the air off the front of that 9 3. Got that 9 3 very, very tight, and Randolph had to lift her. He was going to get wrecked. Or he, he might have just pushed into the wall. He might not have even wrecked. Keegan Thompson, some others knocked down the wall once again. I believe Jeff Bright might have been one of them. Gregory knocked down the wall. You see, there's Jeff Bright and a battle with Co Luigi. That is for one of the chase points. That is a battle for, I believe, the 14th position. So the run off the top is just something very, very strange here at Charlotte. Inside lane just not working well. The only way you get the inside lane to work is if someone on the outside nails that wall like we've been seeing. As five cars pull away, and they got Case, you know, Kevin Van, sixth to about 15th in this. And they got 17th on back in this train of cars. So here are all these guys back here, some chasers back here. Right now, your last chaser is in the last position, Alexander Rowe, 42nd. Now he wants for his chase in that number seven car. Another chaser that we saw while going through the field, Francis Dustin back here in the 35th position. Patrick Smith and Joe Jefferson are fighting for the 30th position, the 39, and the 51. Tim Gary's right here in the, I believe, 28th position, number 16. We have John West in the A7 right now falling back to about 24th position. And then I believe the rest of the chasers are pretty much up here. Once again, these front five, just exactly how we left them, just very hard to pass. And as we said, it's probably going to come down to pit stops. So once we get to about 20 laps to go, watch out for maybe some pit stops to start happening. I think that 17 car is faster than that 11. He has to try and find a way, possibly down the straightaway, or some some other way to get around that 11 car. He's not going to be able to do it through the corner, especially on the inside lane. See Hanley backing up to Tim Randolph. Randolph with a big run. He's going to look to the inside in three. Gets underneath that 30 car, but can Hanley use the run off the top like everyone else has been? Yes, he gets a run off the top. Closes in on the front two. Now Hanley looking to the inside of Anderson. Tight down low once again. There's a car smoking. It's Eli Bright that's blown up in the 88. And if he stops on track, that could be a yellow. Michael Gregory once again knocking the wall down. Bright has stopped on track. Have officials found any sort of fluid? Keeping it green for now. No caution yet. I believe we're going to keep it green. But tough break for Eli Bright in the 88. And possible issues for some Hendrick Motors. If you're driving the 48, the 24, or even the 5, Jeff Bright was in the chase. Are you just a little bit worried that your teammate blew up? Jeff Bright in the 5 is right now in the top 15, battling with Michael Gregory for 13th. As Gregory has knocked the wall down a few times in a row now. And he's going to fall back. Cold Luigi powers around Jeff Bright, trying to do so. Car staying high as if some, someone was pitting. The caution has come out. For a crash on the back stretch. And what looks to be two of your chasers involved, Joe Jefferson and Tim Gary. So race back was Evan Hunter with the race lead. This should now be some pit stops. If we stay here, they might have to pit. So Evan Hunter did lead them back. Anderson thinks he has the spot. He might enter pit road in front, actually, if uh, Hunter does not get back around. I think, actually, Anderson thinks he has the spot. That whole mess right here. And they actually let Seaman go, so very interesting there. They're just going to pit where they came in. So everyone should come down. This will be their only pit stops of the day, as they should be able to make it. So they pack it full of fuel. Four tires uh, should be going on here in full tank of fuel. But the question is, as we mentioned, Michael Gregory, he nailed the wall a few times. Jeff Bright nailed the wall a few times. We saw Levi Shones on the wall a few times. Adam Lewis, Keegan Thompson. Do they take time to repair the damage? 
We're about to find out. Anderson with the number one pit stall because of the pole. Yeah, everyone should be taking on four tires. If they don't, that is going to be some ludicrous uh, strategy right there. Is you definitely want four tires to make it all the way to the end on fuel. You see Tim Gary uh, in the 16. Remember, he came down pit road lap earlier. He had some damage from that crash. Tim Gary and Evan Hunter lead with the race lead. Second will be Evan Hunter. Then you got Tim Randolph, William Seaman, K. Samito, and TJ Hanley. So they're the, the only change in the top five. Samito and Hanley trade some spots. Adam Lewis picks up a big game. Brandon Tharp as well. Some of, some of these guys, big gains. But as we mentioned, the five took some extra time to repair that damage. The 29 is still on pit road repairing damage. The 47, the 56. 29 finally leaves. So your race league continues to be Julius Harrison in the 17. Now let's check out what happened as a few of our chasers were involved in this first crash of the day. This has some multiple parts, it looks like. We saw Josh Mill in this 15 right here. He gets slow for some reason, almost like he has a flat tire. He starts slowing down, trying to get down low, and his teammate Jonathan Buford comes by, nails him. Now, I don't believe they actually caused the caution. See, they keep it straight. There's no yellow. Oh, and then he gets nailed by Alex Stewart. Spins around, that brings out the caution. Jay Jefferson clips, her along, clips along the wall. And then coming off of turn number two, Tim Gary in the middle, Riley's really to up top, gets into the wall, comes down, Tim Gary up into him, spins them around, and Joe Jefferson and Tim Gary take a hard look into the inside wall. Spurly Tube just misses the opening, that, that bad opening that we've seen so many times at Charlotte. He just misses that. Let's go on board Tim Gary and Joe Jefferson as two chasers involved and get heavy damage from this crash. Pretty, oof. Pretty heavy damage there for Tim Garrett's gone board. Joe Jefferson now the 39. Not how these guys wanted to start their two chase races. Almost had it missed. So Julius Anderson leads them off of pit road. And it'll be a restart with about 20 laps to go here at Charlotte. In three and four, take the restart here on lap number 30. Elap Bright has retired. Remember, he had some mechanical issues, and the 55 also retired. There's going to be four cars left in the race. 39 on the lead lap, technically 38. Out front, you have Julius Harrison in the 17, and second, Evan Hunter. Third, Tim Randolph. Fourth, William Seaman. Fifth is Kay Samito. So this could be very interesting. Both these cars in front of the leaders are damaged. Tim Gary with more damage than Josh Miel. Let's see how this goes as the green flag is back out. We're back racing. Fight to get to the inside. Tim Gary not going to get going. Julius Harrison's teammate gets down low. Who's going to get stuck up high behind the 16? They're close. Banging. Hanley now. Lewis. Lewis up into Hanley. Into Brandon Tharp. But gets into the wall pretty hard. And will drop back. Hanley has been shuffled to the top. Stuck behind the 16. Randolph going to split to the middle. Does Hanley follow him through? Hanley has to get down to that middle lane. He can't keep giving up these spots. Tim Gary slowing up the whole outside lane. One of your chasers is in it. TJ Hanley. Brandon Tharp was shuffled back to here. As he got put into the wall. Remember by the 22 and the 30. Gary slowing up that whole top lane. As we look ahead to the race lead. William Seaman will take it from Julius Anderson. Seaman, your new race leader here at Charlotte. Evan Hunter will get to second. The fight for third is Case Mito and Julius Anderson. Cole Luigi and Luz have cleared to fifth and sixth. Into the wall, Levi Shones once again. Fights everywhere. Tim Gary, TJ Hanley still getting held up. So from sixth and now... Can he get down low? The caution has come out. They're crashing front straight away. A car is upside down. It's Jeff Bright, Levi Shones. Two of your chasers are flipped in the infield. Avier Nandez with damage. Racing back three cars. Evan Hunter is going to clear Seaman. Seaman into the wall. Hunter back in front. Anderson in second. And Seaman back to third. As two of your chasers involved in heavy crash. As both of them go flipping through the infield grass. Let's check out what happened. 
off of turn number four. Levi Shelton's way up high against the wall into the 14. He hits him. He hits that wall, comes down to the 48. They go through the grass. Then Isaac Nichols trying to rejoin. He hits the, where the pavement kind of comes up, nails off the ground, and then that happens, and five and 14 go flying. Luke Rainey avoids it. Alexander Rowe, Avi Hernandez comes in, hits the 14 hard. Some of these guys on the brakes. Justin Ethan Carter freezing a near miss. But these two take a wild, wild tumble off of turn number four. And both end up in the turn one grass. As Shones back on all fours. Jeff Bright on his lid. Wow. Look at this in real time. You saw Nichols in the 48. He didn't mean to wreck Shones. When he came back up onto the track, he hit where the pavement and the grass meet. It bounced the car up off the ground. And uh, was able to control his car, luckily. But unluckily for Shones. And Jeff Bright wrecks them both. We would go on board with these two, but camera signals were interrupted and I uh, couldn't really see anything, so we'll just look at this from multiple different angles. See, Shones does get into the wall right there, comes down. Nichols is hiring the gas, trying to get underneath him, and then comes up into him, obviously, and then Jeff Bright involved, and both those two take a nasty tumble into the fence, and then Avi Hernandez nails Levi Shones. So Charlotte, the demise for Levi Shones, won here in the Target Series earlier in the season, and now... In the Target Series, a gearbox issue puts him 42nd and in second to last place in the Target Series chase. And now here today in a hard flip, which will give him one of the last chase spots and will drop him down in the chase points as he and Jeff Bright take a hard tumble. This helps out a few chasers like TJ Hanley, who was getting stuck behind that 16 car. As back in front, it was Evan Hunter in the 11. He beats Anderson and some others back. As I believe, oh, I, I thought that maybe the uh, Seaman and some others came down pit road. Seaman just had to get by the 15. They should get caught up in no time. Evan Hunter will be your race leader as Hilly is back to the green flag. Come back to the restart in lap number 38. As you can see from that wreck, Avi Hernandez, Jeff Bright, and Levi Shones out. So two chasers done. Jeff Bright will get one point. Shones will get two. Tim Gary and Josh Smeal to the inside lap cars. Smeal not as slow. Tim Gary very slow though, so watch for him. So out front, you have Evan Hunter. In second, you have Julius Aronson. Third, William Seaman. Fourth, Case Mill. In fifth, Cole Luigi. Then Adam Lewis in sixth. Michael Canto, seventh. Marcus Sachi in eighth. Wyatt Walker, ninth. And Tim Randolph rounding out the top ten. So you don't want to be on the inside, especially if it's behind that number 16. It'll be interesting to see how this restart goes. As the green flag is waving, we're back racing here at Charlotte. Hunter gets clear. Everyone gets away. The first, I would wager about seven, eight cars going to get clear. Tim Gary's the hit turn one. And no one is going to dare go down to that bottom lane. Nichols the first. He's going to shoot back up the track, seeing how slow that 16 is. And who's going to get held up? Down the back, shuffling around the inside lane. Possibly going to be the place to be. Justin Heath does get to the inside and will get by him. So now the outside, Alexander Rowe, one of your chasers, getting held up. Look at the run for these guys. They're getting held up just a little bit as well. Patrick Smith makes it three wide. He's going to get by. As you look up ahead, William Seaman has gotten to second. Cold Luigi in the 42 to third. The talk in the garage has been about the 42 team and how he's going to be the fight for the championship. You have to beat him at Homestead to get that championship. And he's showing why. That team has just shown that they can adjust their cars throughout the race, get their cars better. And while they might not have been in winning positions at the beginning of the race, they are in winning positions at the end of the race. And that is why they are the biggest threat to win the championship. He's up to third now. William Seaman looking at Evan Hunter for the race lead. Down the back stretch. Look at this pack of cars. Last car in this pack. Luke Rainey in the two. Seaman cannot make the pass. Didn't have the draft. Code Luigi under attack from Michael Canto in the 09. Canto looking to the bottom. Code Luigi with the big run. He's going to get to the inside. Seaman into turn one. That's the fight for second. Luigi trying to get away from all the other chasers. He's trying to get away, I believe, the first... The next size chaser is the 18 of Kevin Band. Way back there, Ballon just inside the top 10. Code Luigi trying to keep just a fender underneath that 38 car. Coming to 10 laps to go. Gets tight down low. I believe Siemens going to be able to clear him off the top. And then let's point out why Walker's in this pack. He's in the sixth position. He has a shot to go back to back as we look to the race lead. Siemens with a pretty good run. Hunter way up the wall. Gets into a little bit, slows him down a little bit as they go down the back stretch. Code Luigi to the outside, Seaman. He thinks the outside's gonna be the place to be. 
Can he hold him down? Get a big run off of four to get to second. He got a big run, but can he clear him? He's cleared down the front stretch of the 42 car to second. Looking for his fourth win of the season. Look into the inside of Hunter already. 42 car is fast down the back. Look at the run he has. Down the back stretch, pulling up on the 11 car. Luigi, the dominant car this season. Now going to battle it out with Evan Hunter. Luigi leads by half a car length. Under 10 to go. And a statement has been made by Code Luigi and the 42 team. He takes the lead. Something that Ganassi has found that 42 camp just this past season. He didn't make the chase last season, season number four, driving for that same 42 team. But it clicked. Once they didn't make the chase, these last 12 races were some of the best I've ever seen. He won two races. If he were in the chase, he probably would have won the championship. Just shows how fast he was. This whole, this whole season, he brought that same speed to the table. And now he's leading at Charlotte in the second chase race, looking to win it, coming to six to go. Yeah, we were talking about some amazing stories. Code Luigi would be great if he won, especially for his team. It would be his fourth win of the season, and he would extend his chase points lead a lot. White Walker would go for a second win of in a row, second win of the season. He's right now in the top five in that fifth position. And then we talk about some other great stories. Up here in this front pack, Keegan Thompson trying to sweep here at Charlotte. He's right now in the 12th position. Balance Luke Rain to his inside. Adam Lewis, Rainey's teammate, has Penzo as the sponsor. Uh, Penzo 500. How great would it be if he won? As they are slow, they have caught Tim Gary. The front three get away unscathed. We were talking about how great it would be if some of these guys won. And then, then we saw a whole pack check up. And that is why William Seaman, the, the big loser in all this, he was about top three when that happened. Now he's going to fall back to the back of this field. Some others on the outside lane going to get stuck. Some others will get by, though. They're saying, thanks, Tim Carey. The battle for second is on. Can they touch? Code Luigi is the question. As they come this time to four to go. Evan Hunter with the run. He gets underneath him. He gets a core panel there. Four to go at Charlotte. Big run for Hunter as they hit turn one. He has a pretty good run. He has Julius Harrison behind him. Code Luigi way up high almost gets into the wall as they come down the back. Still side by side with that 11 car. Can he get clear? I believe he does, but Hunter with another big run into the corner. This could be a big fight. Code Luigi does get clear off of four with now three to go. Big fight there for Evan Hunter. He shows he has the car to do it. He shows he has the drive to do it. But does he have the time? Does he have the speed? No lap cars are going to interfere with this race. The next one is the 13 coming off the four. They will not catch him in two and a half laps. So coming to this time to two laps to go. Your chase points leader trying to win his fourth race of the season. The Penzo 500. But he has the 11 of Evan Hunter running him down and Julius Anderson, the 17, waiting. Hunter back to the inside to turn one. Big run for the 11. Off of two. Down the back stretch. Side by side. Entering turn three. The drafting up with the 11 car. Hunter almost pushed by Ko Luigi. Ko Luigi into the wall. Slows him down a little bit. White flag for Hunter. One more time around to Charlotte. He gets clear of Cole Luigi as they hit turn one. But does the 42 and 17 have a run for him? Tight down low for the 17. Down the back stretch. Cole Luigi with a big run to the top. He's going to get to the outside of the 17. Can he make one last charge into three and four for Hunter? Evan Hunter. Might not have had the best car today. But he had the drive to get to victory lane. He'll beat out Cole Luigi and Julius Anderson to win at Charlotte. And once again, a non-chaser steals a victory from a chaser in both races so far in the chase. Won by non-chasers, and the guy who finished second, the chaser, Code Luigi. So Code Luigi extends his chase points lead, but Evan Hunter wins at Charlotte his second victory of the season. Great win for that 11 team. He had timed it right to get by Code Luigi and got a little bit of help there from Code Luigi once that 4-2 got into the wall. Let's now go check the finishing results.
The other finisher is also from the Penzo 300 at Charlotte. There are three caution flags for eight laps, and there are six lead changes among four different drivers. Evan Hunter led the most laps, so he had a pretty dominant car. He didn't have the best car at the end, but he had a dominant car, and he uh, he got the uh, the drive at the end to win. Uh, led 31 of 51 laps. Code Luigi, highest finishing chaser once again. So close to victory lane, though, once again, that's two races in a row now where he got beat up by non-chasers. Code Luigi ends up second, led seven laps. Uh, Julius Harrison, third from the pole, leads 11 laps, so... Those were the three guys that led the most laps today, I believe, and they finished top three. Wyatt Walker backing up his win with a fourth place finish, and Marcus Sashi showing some life here as of late. He's up to fifth. Then uh, Bray Ernest in sixth, Justin Ethan seventh, next chaser Kevin Van eighth, Luke Rainey ninth, great run for that two team, and DJ Reed rounding out the top ten. So there's top 20. You can see Isaac Nichols, a big mover right there, went from 36th to 11th. Same with Bray Ernest, who went from 39th to 6th. Keegan Thompson, remember we said he was uh, going to try and sweep Charlotte, almost what uh, Jay Jefferson did last season after finishing first and second at Charlotte. Thompson ends up finishing 20th, not the day he was looking forward to. Here today, he's looked down 21st to 40th. See a lot of chasers down here in this graphic. Uh, Joe Jefferson, 30th. Jay Jefferson, 29th. So the Jeffersons finished together. TJ Hanley started from fourth. He was top 10 pretty much the whole race. Got blocked by the 16 of Tim Gary on the one restart. Pushed him back to the back of the field. And he could never recover. He finishes 33rd. So tough break for him. The two chasers to not finish this race. Where, of course, the 14 and the 5s, they went flipping through the grass. And now at the right side are the points standings. Code Luigi has 24 points, so he is your points leader. But there is a tie for second with 20 points apiece. Francis Dustin and Kevin Vanden. As you go on down, you have 12 chasers. Been a wild two races so far, and can only get wilder from here. That's how fun the Gatorade Cup Series chase is. So as you look, the next race will be the Pure Michigan 400 at Michigan. See you guys then.